During the Corn Laws debate in 1815, another economist stepped forward and said Adam Smith is wrong. So this economist's name is David Ricardo, and here's his book, The Principles of Political Economy and Taxation. And David Ricardo stepped in front of English Parliament and said, yes, we need free trade, not these corn laws, but Adam Smith is wrong. It's wrong to think that just because a country or a company has lower wages, higher productivity, lower taxes, or some other advantage, that those who ha are the most efficient should be the one making it. Because what if, for example, you have a country who is more efficient at everything? What if a country can make everything cheaper and quicker? According to Adam Smith, they should be making it all. Because Adam Smith said you should specialize in what you have the absolute advantage in. And David Ricardo points out, what happens if one party has the absolute advantage in everything? So David Ricardo says, don't look at absolute advantage. Look at comparative advantage when you are deciding who should specialize in what. When we talk about comparative advantage, we're talking about the sacrifice that is made when you make something. So in order to produce one good, you have to give up time and resources to produce something else. And we already know this term. What do we call that sacrifice? Right? That's opportunity cost. So comparative advantage looks at opportunity cost. And according to David Ricardo, your country or company should make a product if it has the lowest opportunity cost. So we have to look at the sacrifice that various parties make and we should each specialize in what we require the least sacrifice to do. So what you have to give up the least amount, that's what you should be making. So let's look at that. So if in one minute's time, country A could produce 20 baseballs or country A can produce five airplanes, then the opportunity cost of producing an airplane is the number of baseballs divided by airplanes. So if you're trying to find the opportunity cost of an airplane, airplane is gonna go on the bottom of your formula there. So baseballs divided by airplanes. So every time country A makes an airplane, they're not making 20 divided by five or four baseballs. So every time they make an airplane, they're not making four baseballs. That's how they're able to either produce 20 baseballs in a minute or five airplanes in a minute. So one airplane is giving up four baseballs. If in one minute country A can produce 20 baseballs or country A can produce five airplanes, then the opportunity cost of a baseball is going to be airplanes divided by baseballs, okay, which gives us a quarter of an airplane. This is a similar calculation to what you did earlier this semester. We looked at opportunity cost from the consumer perspective, right? We talked about the budget line, and if you spent your money on one item, you could afford less of another. So this is that same calculation here, but from the business perspective. So to calculate opportunity cost of baseballs, baseballs is gonna go on the bottom of your formula. To calculate the opportunity cost of an airplane, airplane's gonna go on the bottom of your formula. So let's go back to our airplanes and baseballs example and see if David Ricardo is right. Now remember David Ricardo pointed out what do you do when a country or a company has the absolute advantage in everything? So let's actually consider a scenario here like this one. Okay, so in our synchronous session or in our face-to-face -face class, we're gonna make airplanes and baseballs just like we talked about in the previous video. So paper baseballs, paper airplanes. If you are country A, you're gonna make a baseball 
you're then going to count to five, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. And then when you get to five, you'll make your next baseball. If you are country B, you will make a baseball and then you will count to 20, one, one thousand, two, one thousand. Only once you get to 20, will you get to make your next baseball. So we can see here that it's going to take country B a lot longer to make baseballs. And so because of that, who do we expect to have the absolute advantage in baseballs? Who do we think is going to be able to make more with less? Right? Well, we expect, right, country A is going to be able to make more baseballs in less time. All right, we do our demonstration. We're going to make paper airplanes. We make an airplane. If you're country A, you count to 10. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. Once you get to 10, you make your next airplane. If you are country B, you will make an airplane, but then you will count to 20. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000. Once you get to 20, you can make your next airplane. So who has the absolute advantage in making airplanes here? Well, considering country B has to count twice as long, we expect country A to be able to make more with less. Now, we're gonna use data again from a previous course. So let's use the 2017 data here. I'll just write up. Okay, and then in our synchronous session or online section, we'll, do, we'll produce our own airplanes and baseballs and we'll get our separate data set that you can work with as well. Okay, so let's do country A and country B and baseballs and airplanes. And again, we're gonna produce for two minutes And because we're producing for two minutes time, we can make either baseballs or airplanes. So let's assume that in two minutes, uh, country A made 309 baseballs, because that's what the 2017 class did. Or in that two minute period of time, they made 57 airplanes. Country B in that two minute time made 104 baseballs, and in that same two minutes, they could, also, they could make instead 56 airplanes. So were we right? Who has the absolute advantage in baseballs? Here we can see country A has the absolute advantage in baseballs. And for this particular class, the airplane numbers are, are tight, so one group must have been making fancier airplanes than the other. Uh, but we can see that country A made more airplanes. So it looks like country A has the absolute advantage in everything. According to Adam Smith, then, country A should make both baseballs and airplanes, and country B should find something else to make. According to David Ricardo, these two countries are still better off specializing in trading, even though one country has the absolute advantage in everything. So let's find out if David Ricardo is correct. Well, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to compare with no trade to trade. So let's take our information here. We having some technical difficulties here and my slides are not changing. Let me just reopen this back up. Try this again. All right. Just look at here. Okay, so we had country A. So I'm just gonna rewrite our numbers real quick here. 
three o oh, whoops three o oh, nine one o oh, four fifty seven fifty six Okay, now what happens if instead of doing two minutes of one or the other, we instead split our time? So what if instead country A spends one minute on baseballs and one minute on airplanes? In that case, then country A is not making 309 baseballs. Instead, they're making half that many which on our table is 154 baseballs. On our graph, we can look at the fraction as we draw our PPF. But on our table, we only recognize those that are complete goods. We don't count the ones that are half made. So if country A splits their time, they're gonna make 154 baseballs. They're gonna make half as many airplanes as well. So 57 divided by two, we get 28. So that means country A is going to produce a total of how many goods? Well, 154 plus 28 is 182. Well, what about country B? Country B is going to spend one minute on baseballs and one minute on airplanes. So instead of making 104 baseballs, they're going to make 52 baseballs. And instead of making 56 airplanes, they're going to make half that amount so they're going to make 28 airplanes that means country b is going to produce and consume if there's no trade a total of 52 plus 28 items which is 80 goods so if there is no trade what you produce is what you consume so a total number of baseballs that are produced and consumed is 154 plus 52, which is 206. In terms of the number of airplanes, if there's no trade, what you produce is what you consume. So each country is consuming 28 airplanes and a total of 56 airplanes is produced. Now, the grand total number of goods that are produced and consumed is 206 plus 56, or you can look at it from the countries. Country A gets 182, country B gets 80. So the total number of goods produced and consumed is 262. Okay, we can put that, let's see if we have a table here. We can also put that on a, graph so let's draw our production possibility frontiers for country a and country b so country a we said they could make uh, only baseballs and make 309 all right it's a little beyond our scale here so let's just extend it a bit 309 and or they could make 57 airplanes so let's mark that here at 57, 309. There are other combinations where they make some of each. So we can put in, for example, where they are producing both baseballs and airplanes. Uh, in that case, country A is 154 baseballs and 28 airplanes. 58, oh, what was that number? That was... 154 and 28. 154 and 28. So the production possibility frontier shows all the combinations of two goods that can be produced, uh, whether we produce all airplanes, all baseballs, or some combination of the two. So we can find those other combinations by connecting our dots here. See how well we've done it, putting our lines. So that should be here on this line. If there is no trade, then what you produce is what you consume, which means country A, again, cannot go outside the production possibility frontier. Yes, they could make less. They could make 20 airplanes and 40 baseballs, but it wouldn't use all of their resources. What they're not able to do is get outside this PPF if there is no trade. 
Country B, we said, would could make 104 baseballs or 56 airplanes. 104 baseballs or 56 airplanes. And we looked at the scenario where they spent their time and resources half on each, and that was 52 and 28. 52 baseballs and 28 airplanes. The production possibility frontier shows the combinations, of course, of making baseballs and airplanes. It doesn't have to be half and half. So we can connect those lines so we can see the other combinations as well. Notice as a quick glance at these graphs that you can tell the country A has the absolute advantage in both baseballs and airplanes simply by the fact that that PPF is shifted further out both for the airplanes and for the baseballs. So country B has the absolute advantage in nothing. So the question is, is David Ricardo correct? Are we better off if we specialize and trade? If there's no trade, we know we are stuck to this PPF or below, that we can't reach outside the production possibility frontier. The question is, are we able to get outside the PPF if we specialize based on comparative advantage? So in order to figure out who's gonna specialize in what, we need to figure out who has the comparative advantage. And recall the comparative advantage is the lowest opportunity cost. So let's look at the opportunity cost for airplanes and baseballs and figure out who should specialize in what. So we can take this information here about how much each country can produce in the same amount of time to help us calculate that opportunity cost. Just like we did with our example here, we said in one minute country A can make 20 baseballs or five airplanes. There we're looking at the same time period. How much can we make of one item or another with the same resources? So country A, the opportunity cost of an airplane is the number of baseballs divided by the number of airplanes. And we know that in two minutes, country A can make 309 baseballs or 57 airplanes. So we take 309 baseballs divided by our 57 airplanes. 309 divided by 57 gives us the opportunity cost of one airplane. So every time you make an airplane, you're giving up a certain number of baseballs. And just like in our previous discussions about opportunity cost, opportunity cost must always be given in terms of what you are sacrificing. So every time we make an airplane, we are giving up baseballs. The question is, how many? So here is where we then need to take 309 divided by 57, and we get 5.42. Okay, so every time country A makes an airplane, they're giving up over five baseballs. Remember as well to our opportunity cost discussion when we talked about consumers, we leave it here in the theoretical value, even though yes, you are not going to trade a fraction of a baseball. And that's because we're going to use this information not only to figure out who's gonna specialize in what, but to determine an appropriate exchange rate or trade rate. So leave it into the fraction at the moment. All right, country B. Country B could have made 104 baseballs or 56 airplanes. So we take the 104 baseballs, divide by the 56 airplanes, and we get an opportunity cost of 1.86 baseballs. So every time country B makes an airplane, they're giving up just under two baseballs to do so. So comparative advantage is the lowest opportunity cost. So who has the lowest opportunity cost when it comes to making airplanes? Who sacrifices the least to make airplanes? Well, the one who sacrifices the least to make the airplanes is country B. So according to David Ricardo, country B 
should make airplanes. They have the lowest opportunity cost. They have the comparative advantage. All right, let's look at baseballs. So to find the opportunity cost of baseballs, we take airplanes over baseballs. So country A could make 309 baseballs or 57 airplanes. So we take 57 over 309. Notice that this is just like the calculations we did for consumers for opportunity cost. Once you find the opportunity cost of one, you can flip it, invert it, and you can find the opportunity cost of the other. So the opportunity cost of one baseball for country A is 57 over 309 or 0.18 airplanes. Every time country A makes a baseball, they're giving up 0.18 of an airplane. What about country B? Country B in two minutes could have made 56 airplanes or 104 baseballs. 56 divided by 104 is 0.54. And we always give what we're giving up. So every time country B makes a baseball, they're giving up more than a half of an airplane. According to David Ricardo, you should specialize in what you have the comparative advantage in, the lowest opportunity cost. So who makes the least sacrifice when they make a baseball? Well, we can see here that every time country A makes a baseball, they give up 0.18 of an airplane, which is less than half of an airplane. So according to David Ricardo, country A should be making baseballs. So we're going to have country B make airplanes and country A make baseballs, and then we're going to trade. So is David Ricardo right? Are you better off if you specialize and trade? All right, so let's start first by looking at the number of goods produced. So we said that country B is going to make airplanes. If country B makes airplanes and only airplanes, they can make 104. So country B is going to make 104 airplanes, no baseballs. Country A, we said, should make the baseballs. Country A, if they only make baseballs, Oh, I got that wrong. Let's undo that. It's not 104 airplanes. Let's take that away. Let's go back to our table here. And country B, we're saying, is making airplanes. That's this number here, 56, not that one. Okay, so country B is going to make airplanes. They're going to make 56 of them. They're going to make zero baseballs. Country A is going to specialize in baseballs. They make only baseballs, they'll make 309 of them. That's this number here. They're gonna make no airplanes. So in total, 309 goods will be made by country A. 56 will be made by country B. We'll have a total of 309 baseballs and 56 airplanes. So that means the total number of goods that are produced is 309 plus 56, which is 365. Okay, so let's first look at the number of goods that are produced. So here we have 365. And if we had no trade, then what you produce is what you consume. One combination is where they produce half the quantity of each. And so in that table, what we had is country A making 182 goods, country B making 80 goods for a grand total of 262. So I think that's this table here. So here we had 262 total goods produced with specialization in trade. We have 365. So already we can see that more is produced. So it seems like David Ricardo is right. More goods get made. But do both parties, are both parties better off? Do both country A and country B get to consume more? Well, in order to figure that out, we need to not just specialize, but we need to trade. 
And if we're going to trade, we need a trade rate. So when we look for a trade rate, it needs to be between the opportunity costs. Both parties will only agree to trade if the trade is better than the sacrifice they make when they decide to make the product themselves. Because if they could really just make the two goods and get a better deal, then they would do that, right? So trade has to be advantageous to all parties. So we have to consider the sacrifice made. If you're gonna focus on baseballs, then that's time and effort not made on airplanes. But if you're going to get airplanes from someone else, it needs to be at a rate that's better than just sacrificing the baseballs and making airplanes instead. So let's look at that. We can do our trade rate in terms of one airplane equals X number of baseballs or one baseball equals X number of airplanes. Since it's so much easier to work with big numbers than it is to work with fractions, we tend to go with the one that has bigger numbers rather than the fractions. So if we look at this, the opportunity cost for country A, every time they make an airplane, they're giving up five baseballs. Okay, now country A, we've said, is going to make the baseballs. So we have to consider when they make baseballs, they're already giving up airplanes. So when we look at the trade rate, it's got to be a trade rate that when they make baseballs and give them up, it's better to do it that way than to stop making the baseballs and just make the airplanes. Country B is making airplanes. So when we do a trade rate... For example, we have the opportunity cost of an airplane is 1.86 baseballs. Every time country B decides to make an airplane, they're not making 1.86 baseballs. So if they're going to make an airplane and trade it for baseballs, it's got to be more baseballs than the 1.86 they, they get, they give up by making the airplane. So it's got to be a better deal than just doing it themselves is what we're saying. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So when we look at our trade rate, here we're doing one airplane for X number of baseballs. In order for it to be advantageous for both parties, it's going to have to be between these two opportunity costs, 1.86 and 5.42. So we need a number between 1.86 and 5.42. Now there's lots of numbers in between 1.86 and 5.42, and all of them would be advantageous for trade. We tend to pick ones that are about halfway in between that are a nice whole number because that makes our math and our life easier. But you could pick one airplane for two baseballs, one airplane for three baseballs, one airplane for 4.7 baseballs, one airplane for 5.037 baseballs. Okay, so anything in between is going to be advantageous for trade. To make it easy to see and for the math to be easy, let's pick something nice and in the middle. Like one airplane for three baseballs. Now, we use the opportunity costs for airplanes. But we could have just as easily have done the opportunity cost for baseballs. So we could have done one baseball for X number of airplanes. Again, it would need to be between the two opportunity costs. So in this case, it needs to be between 0.18 and 0.54. Well, what's a number in between 0.18 and 0.54? 0 0.25, 0 0.33. So one airplane for three baseballs is the same as one baseball for a third of an airplane. Just like one airplane for four baseballs is the same as one baseball for a quarter, 0.25, of an airplane. So regardless of which opportunity costs you use, whether you're looking at it as one airplane or one baseball, you actually come up with the same exchange rate, the same trade rate. It's just whether you have it in terms of one item for something else 
or another item. So you can do it either way. You don't have to do it twice. Uh, here I'm showing you one airplane for three baseballs or one baseball for a third of an airplane. But really all you need is that one here. Okay, so let's do that one and see if we're better off. And let's go to our graphs. Okay, so we said the country A, country A was going to make baseballs. So let's mark that. Country A is going to make 309 baseballs. And country A is going to trade those baseballs at a rate of one airplane for three baseballs. So let's start trading. Okay. So here we can pick any combination. We know that country B made 56 airplanes. So you really can't get more. <coughs> you can't get more than 56 airplanes. But we could start trading for a lot of airplanes or any combination of airplanes. So if we're at 309 baseballs, what if we give up what if we give up 100 baseballs? Actually, let's make it nice and divisible because it's one airplane for three. So let's do, let's give up 90 baseballs. So if we give up 90 baseballs, then for each, for every three baseballs, we're going to get one airplane. So 90 divided by three is 30. So that's 30 airplanes we're going to get. And we're going to give up 90 of the baseballs. So 309 minus 90. We get what? Oh, that's not right. <laughs> what is 309 minus 90? Right? Quick calculation here. Uh, let's see. 21. We get it there, 219. 309 minus 90 is 219. Okay, so let's show that point here. We have 219 baseballs. That's right here. And we get 30 airplanes. Okay, uh, let's try a different number. What if, for example, we won 50 airplanes? Well, the exchange rate is one airplane for three baseballs, so 50 airplanes. So, Let's see if I can get this go back. Um, So we have 50 airplanes and one airplane for three baseballs. So 50 times three is 150. So we started 309 baseballs. We give up 150 of them. And in exchange, we're gonna get the 50 airplanes. So 309 minus 150, right, is 159. So let's find 159. So what do we notice about these combinations? Whether we're giving up 90 baseballs to get 30 airplanes, or whether we are giving up 150 baseballs to get 50 airplanes. Notice that all of these points, right, are outside the production possibility frontier. Are these points possible if there was no trade. No, right? So is that is David Ricardo right? Are we better off if we specialize and trade? Well, country A is. Country A seems to be better off. They're able to reach all these points outside the production possibility frontier. Now, I just arbitrarily chose to um, get 30 airplanes or get 50 airplanes uh, you could choose a different combination. Have them get 20 airplanes. Have them get 40 airplanes. You would again find points 
along this production possibility frontier. Okay, so country A seems to be better off. What about country B? So country B, you remember, had the absolute advantage in nothing. <clears throat> Are they better off? Well, we had country B making airplanes. So let's mark that here. We're going to make 56 airplanes. And we're going to trade at a rate of one airplane for three baseballs. Okay. So let's start with our 56 airplanes and start giving some up. So maybe we give up, um, I don't know, so we want to give up 26 airplanes. That's going to leave them with 30 airplanes. That'll put us here. Okay. If we do that, then those 26 airplanes, each airplane is going to give us three baseballs. Okay. So we could do this calculation here. 6 times 3 is 18, 3 times 2 is 6, that's what, 78 baseballs. Okay, so they're going to get 78 baseballs, they're going to have 30 airplanes left after they give up 26. Are they better off if they specialize in trade? Yes, we can see we are outside the production possibility frontier. We could choose a different combination. So what if instead, um, what if they give up 50 of their airplanes? That'll leave them with six airplanes. Okay, and we know at one airplane for three baseballs, uh, 50 airplanes will give them 150 baseballs. So again, outside the production possibility frontier. Now here we chose to give up 50 airplanes or 26 airplanes. You could choose other combinations. You could give up 10 airplanes. So 56 minus 10 is 46. And for those 10, they would get 30 baseballs. So you can find any combination. And we can connect all these options here. These are all combinations that are possible with specialization and trade. Specializing in who has the comparative advantage, the lowest opportunity cost, and then finding a trade rate that is between those opportunity costs. Here we can see that David Ricardo is correct, that more is consumed because we're outside the production possibility frontier. For both country B, the country with <coughs> No absolute advantage in anything. More is consumed for country A, who had the absolute advantage in everything. And we can see that overall, more goods are produced. So more goods are produced, more goods are consumed. And we can see that David Ricardo is right. If we specialize in what we have the comparative advantage in, then everyone is better off.